Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I found this product in the ASEAN TV section at the store, so I had to buy it to see if it works as advertised. It says it provides total comfort, and I'm all for something that provides that. Alright, this is the least comfortable pillow I've ever used in my entire life. As seen on TV is the episode where Spongebob appears in a commercial for the Krusty Krab and thinks he's become famous as a result. This episode aired on March 8, 2002 and is the episode that features the second Krusty Krab well before the Spongebob Squarepants movie in 2004. This episode features what is referred to as the first Krusty Krab commercial, which would later be retconned with episode 240, Truth or Square, from season 6, where they have a flashback showing an old school Krusty Krab slash Krabby Patty commercial. But that's not what we're here to talk about. It's an ego boost of an episode for somebody seen on TV, but not really seen on TV. Everybody goes through that, so what's a Spongebob without this episode to teach what it's like? let alone it being the 93rd individual episode of this show. So let's watch this episode and see what a commercial can do for things. So the episode starts up and Mr. Krabs is walking his worm, Mr. Doodles, down to the Krusty Krab, where they're shooting a commercial to get more customers. Squidward was organizing it, but there was a whole ass movie crew there working on it. Mr. Krabs was not happy with Squidward's plan because it looked too expensive. Did Mr. Krabs just abandon his pet worm, Mr. Doodles? With useless junk for a 28th scene, a second Krusty Krab and Mr. Krabs for an understudy, and a clown to help with stress, Mr. Krabs just fired everybody on the spot, except for the clown, leaving the only people to make the commercial, Spongebob, Squidward, and Mr. Krabs, because the clown was never seen again. Spongebob was ecstatic to learn that he got to be in the commercial, but to Squidward's disdain, that commercial was airing later that night. 3.28 a.m. Isn't it the first rule of video projects to start as soon as possible because you cannot get it done in one day? Later that night, Gary was tired and Spongebob was excited. The commercial came on and it consisted of Squidward wearing a wig and Pearl hungry with cash and Mr. Krabs appears to take them to the Krusty Krab and give them a Krabby Patty. Spongebob is shown while they show that the Krabby Patty consists of secret sauce and buns. What secrets is that sauce hiding? Squidward and Pearl's characters are satisfied by the Krabby Patties, Spongebob is in the background, and the commercial ends. Spongebob loved watching it and went to bed. He woke up a few hours later and went to the Krusty Krab. On the way, Old Man Walker came up to him and said he saw him in a commercial. Well, the commercial he saw was for a cereal called Bran Flakes, which happened to be shaped and colored similar to Spongebob. Spongebob didn't realize Old Man Walker didn't see the right commercial and started feeling very egotistical thinking he was famous now. He bumped into Nad, who read Spongebob's name tag, and then gave Fred an autograph when he wanted a napkin, and started acting weird with the mop when he thought the kids wanted pics. Sounds like a talent show without the talent. Mr. Krabs finally intervened and told Spongebob to clean the bathroom. After he went inside, two fish were talking about someone named Glenny McPinkfish on a show called Flounderman, saying he's amazing at singing. But Spongebob, again, didn't realize they weren't talking about him and thought he should start making music. He came into Mr. Krabs' office saying that he didn't want to be a fried cook anymore and said that he felt he was destined to be an entertainer, making music and not commercials. Mr. Krabs was absolutely f***ing befuddled by Spongebob's words, thinking he needed Squidward's gas mask to continue working. Did Squidward even bring his gas mask to work? Spongebob left his hat and walked out of the office, but the customers were pissed because they had been waiting for Spongebob to make them Krabby Patties. Squidward told them to get back to work or both of them will get fired, but changed his mind because he liked that idea. Who would do all the work before Mr. Krabs hires somebody else? Spongebob grabbed the microphone, turned down the lights, and started singing a song about a striped sweater that some guy was wearing. As much as we like it, it didn't please the customers. Spongebob went into the kitchen to start juggling patties and telling jokes at the same time. But this made the customers even more angry. Spongebob slipped on patty grease and everybody booed him and he thought his career was over. But the patties landed on the grill and the customers got happy. 
Sona realized they liked it, so he rolled with the act of making more patties, which made the customers so happy they cheered, especially when they finally got the patties for themselves. Mr. Krabs saw this and gave Swan Dog his hat back. Swan Dog was happy he gave up fried cooking for fried cooking, and the episode ends. Yeah, and I'm happy I gave up paying student loans for not paying student loans. So that was As Seen on TV, and that's a pretty solid episode if I do say so myself. It's got quite a few funny moments to wrap. I like when SpongeBob's nose stuck out when he was buried underground. I love how f***ing dead inside Squidward looks when he's wearing a wig in the commercial, as well as his bewildered reaction when Spongebob gives him the autograph, and Mr. Krabs' reaction to Spongebob's talking about becoming an entertainer, just to name a few. I do think the commercial itself is pretty good. It does an effective job at showing off the Krusty Krab and Krabby Patty, and having Spongebob appear on TV just enough, and not appear on TV just enough, so he can still get the ego boost as the episode goes on, even though the commercial was longer than 60 seconds. Speaking of which, Spongebob is also quite strong in this episode. Being seen on TV in some way and getting recognized for something can definitely feed an ego, and I think that Spongebob does this pretty well. I like his conversations with Mr. Krabs in his office about starting a music career. I like that he doesn't become insufferable and treat others like shit in this episode, saying something like, I was in a Krusty Krab commercial. I don't have to talk to you. To any of the customers. And his world comes crashing down when he slips and everybody boos him. A pretty fine punishment for causing the disruption. I will say, it would have been nicer to actually see his face in the commercial, even if it's just for a split second. Just for something slightly more effective when Old Man Walker mistakes Spongebob for brand flakes. But I do still like what they were going for here. Showing how even the most kind, hardworking, self-motivated people can still get an ego boost from even the smallest things. You won't see Spongebob getting over his head like this in seasons 10 or 13. I'm also not gonna lie, it took me a little while before I got the punchline to this joke. Uh, what do you call a vampire whose car breaks down three miles from the blood bank? A cab! Usually a punchline to a joke like that ends with a pun or an insult for the subject of the joke. But when I realized that you need to phone a cab for the vampire trying to get to the blood bank, my head popped. So I think that makes the joke even better purely on the wordplay alone. Also, I will say, as a teenager, I was on a brief phase of being obsessed with this episode and sister episode, episode 94, Can You Spare a Dime? During that time, my two favorite scenes from this one were the commercial scene at the beginning and the Striped Sweater song. I still like the Striped Sweater song, but I don't scratch my head like crazy at the thought of rewatching this episode to listen to the song. These days, I'd say my favorite scene is the beginning where Squidward is directing the commercial and he's going above and beyond to make it good, and seeing Mr. Krabs question everything. I love the useless junk, the second Mr. Krabs, and the clown. Also, when Mr. Krabs fired everybody, I always heard these lines from the disgruntled film crew. I always liked that detail. Also, fun fact, when I watched this episode as a kid, and Spongebob accidentally broke Mr. Krabs' claw and one piece was hanging apart, that made me flex the tips on my pointer fingers to somewhat mimic that motion. It impressed some kids on the playground when I showed them this. I feel that's all I can pretty much say about this one. It's a nice episode. I don't think I would call it the best of season 3, but it's still a very decent one nonetheless. The making of the commercial scene, the commercial itself, and the striped sweater song followed by the juggling are the best parts of this episode in my opinion. It's definitely what I always remember from this episode when I was a kid, and it's a good one to rewatch. Even if we never find out what happened to Mr. Doodles, damn it. <laughs> also, the Brand Flakes commercial is so short and dumb that I just love it. New Brand Flakes. Bold new taste. Brand Flakes. As seen on TV is a good episode. While the way Spongebob was seen on TV can be a bit of a stretch, I still can't deny it's a pretty good episode. Even if the only thing people talk about with this episode today is the Striped Sweater song. But hey, I'll take that instead of one blinking you'll miss it frame becoming a meme out of nowhere. And also... Oh, uh, I gotta take this. Hello? Hey Mikey, I heard you were talking about Nickelodeon sh it's been happening a lot lately, so you're fired. Well, I lost my job. 
So now I'm gonna lay in my room with facial hair while I look for another job. Hey! Garson! Yes, sir? One drink, please. On it! <sighs> this is gonna be a long day. I know! Can you spare a dime is the episode where Mr. Krabs accuses Squidward of stealing his first dime. So Squidward quits his job and loses his house and has to move into Swindoll's house in the meantime. Like as seen on TV, this episode aired on March 8, 2002, and it also has a title that isn't a title, it's a question. This episode also reveals that Mr. Krabs has a first dime he ever made that he keeps at the back of the register, and when it's revealed to not be in the register, it looks like that, and it'd be a shame if there was a bad season 9 episode that showed a different first dime Mr. Krabs made. <laughs> Other than that... Huh, I guess that's it. I may not have had much to start out with, but I still have some nice memories with it. I mentioned that short-lived phase in high school where I watched this and as seen on TV on my iPod Touch a lot. So let's watch this episode and see why you shouldn't cause an argument over 10 cents. So the episode starts up and it's closing time at the Krusty Krab. Squidward wants to leave, but Mr. Krab says he can't until the day's receipts are fully accounted for, even if it's unfair. He finds everything in order, except his first dime that he kept at the back of the register for luck. Squidward said he didn't see it, but Mr. Krabs thought he was lying and suggested putting his hand on a stack of interpretive dance quarterlies. He didn't have a Bible on hand? Squidward could tell Mr. Krabs was accusing him of stealing his dime, which of course, Squidward didn't do. Squidward got mad, threatened Mr. Krabs' eyesight, and quit his job, so Spongebob caught his hat. Spongebob tried to convince Squidward to stay on board, but Squidward didn't oblige. Spongebob realized there was no stopping Squidward, but told him to come to him if he needed help with anything at all. Here's your drink, sir. Thank you, my good man. Oh, they were mango. That was the flavor. Squidward didn't want Spongebob's help and thought that he could unlock his potential and be anything he could imagine. He assumed the town would be obsessing over him soon enough, but next time Spongebob saw him, he was living in a box asking for spare change. Soon Squidward had the box taken away from him and admitted to Spongebob that he lost everything and even had to eat his own paintings to survive. I hope those paints were non-toxic. Spongebob kindly offers to let Squidward live in his house until he gets back on his feet. He let Squidward sleep in his bed for the time being. The next morning, he made a huge breakfast buffet for Squidward and in bed too. Squidward was very thankful for Spongebob's support but it didn't take too long for things to start starting. Spongebob started to pamper him with massages, acupuncture, and all sorts of things. Thank you for putting the games in my hand, sir. One night, Spongebob was exhausted, but Squidward asked Spongebob for smaller things he could do himself, which went on until Spongebob fell down the stairs. Gary told Spongebob that Squidward was taking advantage of him, but Spongebob didn't believe that. Three weeks later. He denied it after three weeks, many months later. Still didn't say anything after months, or even, so much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. I know how that feels. Swindog so got more tired and fed up as time went on, having to put up with Squidward's ridiculous demands, forcing him to wear a maid uniform to serve him lemonade. But Squidward didn't want to drink the lemonade because the lemon had three seeds in it, even though I can only see two. Squidward said it wouldn't work either way, and Spongebob finally started to lose his patience. Well that takes care of one of the two things that won't work. Spongebob drops less than subtle hints towards Squidward so he would get a job, but no matter what he tried, Squidward just ignored all of them. After a very good puppet show, Spongebob finally snapped at Squidward telling him to just get a job, which Squidward still didn't comply with. Swindog pushed the bed of the Krusty Krab and gave Mr. Krabs various dimes to let Squidward come back. Mr. Krabs didn't oblige, and things got out of hand to the point where Spongebob strangled Mr. Krabs and shook him until it was revealed his first dime was in his pants the whole time. I've been in business a long time, boy. How old is he? Swindog was happy Squidward could finally come back. Later on, Squidward was back at work, and he and Mr. Krabs seemed to make up, until Mr. Krabs claimed Squidward misplaced the dime by putting it in his pants. Squidward got mad again, Mr. Krabs making another accusation caused Spongebob to put the maid uniform on, and the episode ends. 
Okay, now that that episode's done, I'm going to order this video game online that I've been meaning to get lately. <laughs> so that was Can You Spare a Dime? And I'd say that was also a good episode. I remember being up in my family's old vacation cottage and spending a weekend mostly watching this episode and asking on TV on my iPod Touch or just having them play in the background while I was playing something on my 3DS. I think I mostly did that with this episode compared to the sister episode. As much as I like the Striped Sweater song, I think this one appealed to me more at that time because of how it was a more character driven story instead of having Spongebob misinterpret everything just because he was seen on TV. I really like Spongebob and Squidward's friendship here. I like how Squidward is okay with staying in Spongebob's house during his moment of weakness and is thankful for everything Spongebob does for him. I also like how Squidward starts becoming more ridiculous with his demands as the episode goes on and ignoring Spongebob's hints and yelling about getting another job. Taking advantage of Spongebob's kind nature for his own good is definitely something he would do. But instead of something like episode 23, Squidward the Unfriendly Ghost from season 1, where he tricks Spongebob and Patrick into catering to his every whim for his own amusement, there is a bit of sympathy with him this time around. He quit his job because he was angry over Mr. Krabs accusing him of something he didn't do, and he was homeless as a result. While Squidward gets more and more unreasonable as the episode goes on, it all started because of the dime accusation at the beginning. So it was ultimately Mr. Krabs' fault Squidward went through that for an indeterminable amount of time. Mr. Krabs is a bit insufferable since he wouldn't rehire Squidward because of a dime, but I can give it a pass because he did get what came to him when Spongebob snapped at him. And it's also funny when he refused to donate to the children's fund. These days, that kind of call can and will try to rob you of all your personal data, so that call could have been a scam. Would you like this peach beer, sir? I don't even know where that came from. You can get rid of that. How? However you want to. I also like how Gary informed Spongebob about what Squirter was doing, but still rubbed it in a bit when Spongebob was tired. But of course, the best character in this episode is Spongebob. I think Spongebob's character is very strong in this episode too. I love how he feels bad for Squidward and wants to help him during his time of need. The first day, he does whatever Squidward wants, even though he was exhausted. Then he becomes aware that the requests are getting more annoying and Squidward is being more unreasonable, and Spongebob loses his patience more and more the more time Squidward ignores Spongebob telling him to get a job. And then he finally snaps when nothing gets through to Squidward, and goes as far as strangling his boss when he refuses to let Squidward come back to work. I love seeing Spongebob in this light because it shows that even he has his own limits, despite his kind, optimistic nature, and he can snap when he's pushed to those limits. I really like how this episode and As Seen on TV show that Spongebob isn't just about happiness, friends, and a carefree nature. He too can get an ego or have limits that make him mad when he's pushed that far. You won't see that in season 14. I do have a couple tiny little nitpicks that I'll share right now. First. This visual right here honestly did startle me a little bit the first time I saw it as a kid, but now I don't have an issue with it. Second, I remember hearing a long time ago that this box square it stayed in was the imagination box from episode 88, Idiot Box, but I doubt that because this box has this red text and arrow on the side, which the imagination box clearly didn't have. And I would mention why Squidward said he was allergic to newsprint when he swatted the paper out of Spongebob's hand when he was shown reading the newspaper at the Krusty Krab before, but I won't because that was him saying ridiculous things so he didn't have to get a job. But that's it. Back to the good stuff. I love the meta humor with the time cards. I like how the lady passes by with cookies and walks away out of nowhere. And when Mr. Krabs said that he had three possibilities, I like the second one better than the first. I feel the delivery is better the second time. Or three, you stole it! Or three, you put that dime in me, pants! And I feel that's about it. I don't have much more to say about this episode, but I think I said everything that truly matters here. Spongebob and Squidward's characters, the reveal of the official first dime, Gary's snarkiness, everything. It's enjoyable to watch, and that's something pretty important in the grand scheme of things. Even if we didn't find out the real reason the dime ended up in Mr. Krause's pants. Hey Mikey's boss, Mikey's been having me do ridiculous things and calling me Garcon for the past 10 minutes. What will it take for you to give him his old job back? Well, 
I'll rehire him if I can change his title from senior to junior and he'll still take the same pay he was getting. Done! Can You Spare a Dime is a good episode. I like how the story is very character driven and all the characters here are really strong, even Mr. Krabs. And I like how this episode and his sister episode both show different sides of Spongebob's character that you don't really see a lot these days. And that's all I can really say about it. But that game I ordered in the mail just came in so I'll be able to play it while I'm looking for a job. Don't worry about that, I got you your job back. I did? Yes, thank you. As long as you're willing to go back with the title of junior, not senior, for the same pay. Eh, I can live with that. 24 hours later. Well, at least I got my job back. And it could have been worse. I could have been accused of doing something I didn't do. Hello? Hey, Mikey. Did you crash my Ferrari?